Takeoff is not a good time for the pilot to want to go one way and the engine another. If you turn right after takeoff, there's a fair chance that you'd put the aircraft straight into the ground. So they did have their accidents. Hugh Hunt from Cambridge University can explain some of the forces that bedeviled the early aviators. I'm moving slowly here, or I'm moving fast. The problem stem from the centrifugal force of the spinning cylinders. This tennis ball weighs a few hundred grams, and I've got a, a, a two kilogram weight here, which is pretty heavy. I can lift that weight off the table with the tennis ball by spinning it around. The force of the horizontally rotating ball is actually redirected 90 degrees to create lift. The force is at right angles to the motion. I have here a, a gyroscope and inside there's quite a heavy rotor. And this rotor you can imagine is the engine. Now, here is my string, and I'm going to pull my string straight downwards. Pulling down sends the engine to the right. Now that starts to be peculiar. Nowhere was this effect more devastating than on the British Sopwith Camel. With a massive 150 horsepower engine, and a body weight half that of its contemporaries, the camel was a powerful and agile combatant. But its power made it dangerous. The problem with the Sopwith camel is that although it was the most successful airplane in terms of victories, half of the pilots that died in that airplane died in takeoff and landing accidents because it was so difficult to maneuver. Flying with minimal training, pilots were going into combat without learning how to compensate for the behavior of the engine. Let's suppose the pilot decides to do a right-hand turn. Well, the plane nosedives. The pilot finds that his yaw control has suddenly become a pitch control. In other words, steering right sent the plane down and left sent it up. You do learn that if you want it to go in a certain direction, you do it 90 degrees removed. Fighting the engine was what put the pilots in danger. The pilot then tries to respond in some way to what's happening. Then I can get into this kind of motion where I just don't know what I'm doing. If they didn't crash first, pilots learn to accommodate the idiosyncrasies of the engine and in time, turn the instability into an advantage in the air. <laughs> 